Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam Amma ba'd Continue on in our study of the, in the hadith series We reach the 12th hadith And this hadith, the subject of this hadith Is the importance of not walking in front of, of a person when they're praying and this is a common mistake we find amongst the Muslims, although we can also say at the same time it's fairly common knowledge that many people know uh, to not walk in front of someone when they're praying. And what affirms this for us is the hadith uh, of Abu Juhaym. فقال Abu Juhaym رضي الله تعالى عنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم لو يعلم المر بين يدي المصلي ماذا عليه لكان أن يقف أربعين خيرا له من أن يمر بين يديه رواه بخاري. In this hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari, the hadith of Abu Juhaym رضي رضي الله تعالى عنه. He said that Allah's Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, if the person passing in front of a worshiper in prayer knew what a sin he was incurring, he would prefer to wait for 40 years. Some of the narrators, they related, uh, there was a, a difference and uh, in the amount of time. So here in this hadith, he mentioned Arba'in. He just said 40. So we don't know if it's days, months, years. The translator has preferred to say years, as is some of the other narrations uh, illustrate this for us. So, again, the Prophet ﷺ said, if the person passing in front of a worshiper in prayer knew what a sin he was incurring, he would prefer to wait for 40 years rather than passing in front of him. Ruahu Bukhari. In this hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, the Messenger of Allah ﷺ informs us that the one who passes directly in front of a person praying commits a grave sin. And that only if he appreciated how great his sin was, he would rather wait for 40 years instead of passing, showing that it's something serious. And it is up, in, in another narration, the Prophet ﷺ mentioned that if a person continues to pass, to try to pass in front of you while you're praying, then you should fight them or you should repel them because verily they are the shaitan. So, meaning that the person who is trying to pass for you is, even if they're unaware, they are causing a type of fitna for you in your prayer. And what it means if they pass in front of you, that takes away some of your adjur and they get a sin. So, this is why the ulama, they mention that the person should repel, try to prevent the person from passing in front of them. And some of the ulama, like Imam uh, Ibn Hajr al-Asqalani, and he is the author of the book Bulugh Maram, which sometimes we've read from. Also, he is the explainer of, one of the explainers of Sahih al-Bukhari. He has a very famous book, it's called Fat al-Bari. Actually, it's right behind you. And it's a very, very important book because it's one of the most important explanations of Sahih Bukhari. And in it, Imam Ibn Hajr mentions that the distance between a person, meaning when it's allowable to pass in front of them, is three arm span, uh, three arms length, as far as a span of a distance. And some say after what would be the sujood where you make sujood, or, or the distance between you and a, uh, and, and as if a, a uh, sheep were in front of you. So the important thing is, is you want to make sure if you end up having to pass by someone in the masjid, then make sure it's a good distance, like between here and the camera. You know, but don't anything closer than that, no. 
Okay, and that then you're safe. You should be safe from this distance. You know, three arm span. And this is, and Allah knows best, maybe from the ijtihad of the great Imam. But the point being is we want to be careful of this because there's a serious uh, punishment which is or the Prophet ﷺ mentioned that this was something big, it's a big sin. And that a person should even repel the person, stop them and prevent them from passing in front of them. Those are just some of the benefits. Also in relation to this, in relation to the sutra, the scholars have difference of opinion over whether the sutra is an obligation or not? Is it wajib to pray with a sutra or not? I'm of the view, and I used to be of the view that it was an obligation, because there's a dilla that the Prophet wasallam it doesn't mention in one, uh, I think it was on Muzdalifa, and he prayed without a sutra, or he prayed and there was uh, nothing between him and uh, in front of him that was mentioned in the hadith. So from this, some of the ulama say that this is dalil that it is permissible to pray without the sutra, meaning that it is mustahab, that it is uh, recommended that you pray with the sutra. So you always try to pray with the sutra. Never not try to pray with the sutra. But then another mas'ala, another issue comes up, and this is what you find especially amongst men in the masjid, and especially you find this amongst uh, some of the students of knowledge and, uh, and people of Ahl Sunnah, Tulab al from Ahl Sunnah, that sometimes you find them that they are moving in their prayer. That it, it, the Imam, after if they miss the raka, and now the salat is over and they're finishing their last raka, and there is a distance, so the people in front of them that finish praying and they've left. The people who believe that it's an obligation, they will move, they will take a few steps. As long as it is in regards to the maslaha of the prayer, that it doesn't violate the prayer. So, for example, they might be praying and they might take one, two, three steps. Some ulama, they mention three steps. Some, they say there is no limit on the steps, but it's just until you get to a sutra. But you don't want to be walking all the way across the masjid. Even if, and you want to also make sure you're facing the Qibla. So this is why, one of the reasons why my view is now after seeing the evidence that Sheikh Salih bin Fozan and, and many others before him mention and that they say that it's uh, mustahab is that is because you know making excessive movement to walk all the way across the masjid to find a sutra and sometimes the people Many of the times the people are not accustomed to this. So if you're moving during the prayer, some of the people, they don't understand this. And sometimes it causes problems in the masjid. Or you've moved to one new sutra and maybe it's a person. The sutra might be a person. And then they move. So then you're out without a sutra again. And then you might move again. So a lot of us used to do this and especially coming from those who have studied in Yemen because they know that the position is very strong there about the sutra that you would see in Sheikh Muqbil's masjid, for example, Rahmatullah you would see the people moving a lot for the, for the sutra because they believed it was a, a, a wajib, that even after the prayer is finished, they would quickly, uh, they would quickly rush to, uh, to, you know, move to a new sutra. Another mas'ala that we need to mention with the sutra is that the sutra, also, the ulama mentioned about the the extent or the uh, the size of a sutra. So a sutra, it should be, you know, something that's at least probably a good foot, at least a foot or or more in length. Okay. And so the Prophet ﷺ would use like a, a short spear or a stick. Uh, you can use a person. If a person's in front of you, that could be your sutra, your door, whatever the case may be. But whatever you're praying in the house or wherever you're praying, try to pray with a sutra. Try to just make that habit and then you are safe with regards to the differences of opinion. Uh, some of the other benefits from derived from this hadith is 
Number one, the sin of passing between a worshiper and a sutra. The second thing, that the one who does so faces a severe punishment. The third thing the author mentioned is a prophet's care and compassion for his people and warning them against sin. Because this is from the, uh, the advice and admonishment of the Prophet Sallallahu caring for his ummah to want them to be away from sin and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us to remove the sin from our lives and we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil anything I said that was correct was from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the shaitan uh, one last uh, thing I want to mention the author mentioned a hadith that's in narrated by Ibn Khuzayma. I'm not sure of its authenticity, but there's many ahadith about the sutra. And in this hadith, the Prophet wasallam said, Do not pray except towards a sutra, and do not let anyone pass in front of you. So this, we find the same meaning in many, in several ahadith of the Prophet wasallam that are authentic. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.